All right, so we've gone through, we've programmed a robot, and we've made it go in a square and through a maze. The next thing that we need to take a look at is using some of the sensors. Now, a robot is equipped with three sensors and a Bluetooth module. Now, two of the sensors are uh, infrared sensors. So they're looking, we can use them to find black and white, which is really good when it comes to line following. Um, a few other things we can use those for, but I'll let you guys figure that out on your own. The other sensor, and the one that we're going to look at in this video, is an ultrasonic sensor. Now, the ultrasonic sensor sends out a pulse of sound and measures how long it takes to bounce and come back. So it's a pretty cool sensor, and there's a lot of programs we can write with it. Um, first thing, though, whenever we're getting started with a sensor, is to open up a new program. So I'm going to go File and New. For my new program and I'm going to start getting in the code for the sensor. If I take a close look at the sensor I'll see that there's uh, two pins on it. One is called echo and one is called trigger. The trigger pin is the pin that um, sends out a sound and the echo pin is the pin that receives it. Um, echo is plugged into 5 and trig, the trigger pin, is plugged into 6. This may differ on your robot, and if you need to troubleshoot, this is the first spot you're going to look. If the sensor's not working, just trace the wires back and make sure echo and trigger are plugged in the right spot. In your void setup, we need to set these as inputs and outputs. So pin mode and we'll start off by making the echo pin an input because it's the one looking for the echo. We need that information on the Arduino to, to run the software. So we'll input. And then we need to make the next pin mode for the trig pin. And output because trigger sends a pulse out and echo brings it in. So I've got my pin mode set up. Now we need to write a little code that allows us to read the sensor. So we're going to do a digital write and we're going to tell the trig pin to go low. That way we've got a reference at the start of the code. So trig pin comma low we're going to do a delay in microseconds. Oops, spelled something wrong there. Capital M. Delay in microseconds. And we're just going to go two microseconds. Just very quick. So now we need to digital write the trig pin high. So we're going to start sending out that pulse. We're going to delay microseconds again. So I'm going to delay for 10 microseconds. And then I'm going to digital write that trigger pin low again. So there we go, digital write trigger pin low. And that's going to send out the pulse. Now the next thing we need to do, we've sent the pulse out, we need to read that pulse. We need to know what it means. So we're going to use a different type of variable called a float. It just allows for some longer numbers. So float, we're going to call this one distance. And we're going to say it equals pulse in. So this is the pulse in from our echo pin echo pin comma high. So as long as echo pin is high, it's going to be reading how long it's high for. So if it's high for 4 milliseconds, it's going to read that. Okay. Now, we're reading it, but the value that's coming in might not necessarily be in distance. 
So it's just measuring a, a period of time. Now we need a little equation to figure this out. So I'm going to say distance equals distance. And for the sake of this, I know that 58 is the number that's going to put it into centimeters. So distance divided by 58 equals centimeters. So now we've changed distance to what the distance actually is. We'll just throw a delay at the end there. Just so we've got some time happening between it when it runs again. So this little program, it's going to set the trigger pin to low. It's going to then wait a little bit, set it to high for 10 milliseconds, and then low. While that's happening, distance is being read from the echo pin. And we're going to be taking distance, dividing it by 58 to give us centimeters. Delay, and then it just happens again and again. Now this is great, but I've got no way of seeing what the distance actually is. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to be able to read the distance. Arduino's got a great little feature called a serial monitor, which allows communication between the Arduino and the computer that we're using. The same feature will be used later with the Bluetooth module. It'll allow communication between the Bluetooth module and the Arduino. So let's go back up to our void setup, and we're going to add a little feature that's going to allow the Arduino to talk to the computer. So serial dot lowercase begin. That's going to turn on communication. And we're going to set it to a baud rate, which is just the speed that it's communicating at, of 115200. And I'll show you why, where we get that number from a little later. So now we've started. There's communication. Now, we've got communication, but there's nothing actually saying here, communicate with the computer. So we need to add that in as well. So for that delay, I'm going to add some communication. So serial again, dot print. And I'm going to add an LN here. This means go to the next line. If you don't say that, it just goes horizontally across the page. If you say LN, it goes vertically down the page. There's some tricks here that we can play with too. But for now, distance, there's my semicolon. So now I'm able to print back to the computer. So I've got my robot plugged in the computer. Let's update, upload this new program. So tools, I'm going to make sure I've got my nano, my ATmega168, and my port should be the highest number. Upload the code. Oop, haven't saved yet, so I'll save that. So we're uploading to my Arduino. There we go, it just takes a second. Okay, done uploading. So let's turn on the serial monitor. So this guy right here. And let's bring it down a little bit. Okay, so you can see it's reading COM5 where I've got the Arduino plugged in and it's spitting out a series of numbers. Now, right now my sensor is just pointed at the wall, but if I move my sensor or move my robot, I can put my hand in front of the sensor and I can start moving this out and reading the distance. You notice you get the odd blip, that's just because I moved my hand a bit too much. But for the most part, we're able to read distance pretty well. So go ahead, try that out and see what happens. Okay. So we've gone through, we've tested our sensor, now it's time to integrate the two programs. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to cut and paste each component over. So echo pin trigger pin, we'll put over here. So now we've got them in our scope. I'm going to grab my serial begin and my pin modes. We can put that down here in the setup. Let's fix that formatting a little bit, make it look a little nicer. There we 
go. And we can drop this in the top of our loop. We could make it its own function, but for the sake of simplicity at this point, we'll just leave it on its own. So control copy that. And we'll come down to our void loop. And we'll put it in. Now I'm going to just scrap this forward and right. Tab that over. Okay. So now we're using the distance or the ultrasonic sensor inside of our code with our robot. So all of our functions are now available. Everything is good to go for this for the robot code. We're going to take a look at two different um, if statements here. Because we've got now that we've got values we can work with, we can program to a robot and say if a value is something, do something else. If a value is higher or lower, do something. So let's say let's write a simple wall avoiding robot program where the robot drives forward till it sees a wall and then it just backs up. So in our if statement, we go if we've got distance as a variable. So if distance is let's say less than or equal to 20 for 20 centimeters like so. Now if is a function so I'm going to put it in a curly bracket. So if it's less than we're going to go reverse. And we're just going to go reverse, I don't know, let's go 100. Really simple little if statement there. Close that off with a bracket. Come down again, alright, so now it's say if distance is greater than or equal to 20, we'll just say 0.1 just so it's a little different. And our curly brackets again. We will go forward for 100. If you make these numbers too high, it's going to go forward all the way till it hits the wall um, because if this was a thousand it's going to go forward for one second before it reads that sensor again. Right now it's going to go forward for 0.1 of a second before it reads that sensor again. Just makes it a bit easier. Um, we'll close that off so we've got our brackets. You can see here, scroll down a bit. So if distance less than equal 20, reverse. If distance is greater than or equal to 20.1, go forward. I've got one too many brackets there. So we should now be able to upload this to our robot. And we can see what happens. So if you take a look, the robot's going forward till it sees the wall and then backing up. <laughs> My floor is a bit slippery, so it is turning a bit. But you get the idea. The next step here is for you to figure out how to make it, when it sees the wall and back up, turn around and go somewhere else. Essentially, that would be a full wall avoiding robot.